The Kodiak 900 is hands down one of the most impressive airplanes I have ever flown. It is a total unicorn because it can take off and land on unimproved strips and under 1500 feet, carry 3000 pounds or 10 people and has a cargo pod and still goes 210 knots on one engine. But it's also easy to fly as I experienced in this flight. That's me in the pilot seat and Mark Brown from Kodiak is here to demonstrate what this airplane has to offer. It's got a 900 horsepower engine and so even starting it up for our demo flight feels like an exciting event. So to start up we'll turn the fuel pump all the way to the on position. Auxiliary fuel pump. Yep. On. So that's a three position switch. Mm -hmm. After startup you're and I'll say move auxiliary fuel pump to standby that's the middle. Yep. And then the starter is two over. So we have the igniters, but we don't need that because the starter automatically turns on the igniters. We're gonna hold that the entire start sequence. So we hold it up. We're looking here at NG. Once this gets to 15%, we'll add fuel to low idle. Okay. Keep holding that until you see 62, 62. 62. And then we'll monitor ITT. The way this engine starts up, it's kind of got an initial run up and then it, it lags a little bit and then it runs a little bit more. Okay. So. If you hear that, don't. I didn't do something wrong. You didn't okay. do anything wrong. Okay. So if you want to go ahead and flip that up. Okay, clear prop. Here we go, start. So you hear the igniters going, starters. There's 15%. I'll add that fuel for you to low idle. And now we're watching ITT and NG here. All right, you can let it go. I'll also bring your, well, let's go ahead and turn the fuel pump to standby. Stand we'll turn the other two red switches on and we can put our headsets on now. Pretty simple. Easy. Even taxiing this airplane is a lot of fun. You have so much power even when taxiing in idle that in order to not ride the brakes the whole time, you actually pull the prop back sometimes into what's called beta, which is basically between idle and reverse. It's very noisy and very cool. You're kind of taxiing. When you put it into beta, it turns, it goes from the horn to a but you just have to embrace it. I mean, it's pretty fun to be in beta, being that guy on the ramp, right with a <laughs> Yeah, just making some noise. Kodiak 900, Zulu, runway 34, clear for takeoff. Wind 300 at 8. Clear for takeoff, runway 34, uh, 900, Sierra Zulu. All right, clear. final looks clear to me. Clear final, and the runway looks clear as well. All right, here we go, guys. All right. Going up all the way to the top of the green ish. Yep. yep, just nice rolling takeoff. There we go. A little bit. There we go. Right there is perfect. Yep. And she's ready to rotate. <laughs> there we go. All right, we'll go. We're through through 85 knots. I'll go flaps to 10. Okay. We'll get auto trim. And then we'll go, we're through 95, so I'll go flaps all the way up. Again, you'll get auto trim. That's nice. Right about here is where we want to be. That's good. And just for now, I'm going to throw the autopilot on. Yep. That, that's okay that with you. That's good. Yep. All right, autopilot is on. Autopilot on. So we're uh, flight level change. 900 Sierra Zulu, contact regional departure, good flight. Over to departure, 900 Sierra Zulu. So this is a, you know, about 1,800 to 2,000 feet climb speed is pretty normal. Wow. Departure Kodiak 900 Sierra Zulu with you off Meacham, climbing through 2,000 for 3,000. 900 Sierra Zulu, radar contact, fighting 280, climb to 4,000. 280, 4,000, 900 Sierra Zulu. <laughs> I mean, we're climbing like... Pretty amazing, right? I mean... And there's Come the, on. And there's a the clear. Woo! I mean, getting on top here of the clouds just never gets old. No, it's such a cool feeling. Even loaded with a lot of fuel, five people, and plenty of gear, we were still climbing at 1,800 to 2,000 feet per minute. Now, as we went higher, we shallowed our climb just a little bit, but we were still getting over 1,000 feet per minute while doing 168 knots of true airspeed. 
That's just unreal. So it didn't take long to get up to 12,000 feet and demonstrate the cruise performance. At 12,000 feet, we were getting about 207, 208 knots of true airspeed and burning about 64 gallons per hour. Now Mark said without the radar pod, you pick up another two knots to achieve that advertised 210 knots of cruise speed. So for range, at max cruise, that equates to about 900 to 1,000 nautical miles of range, depending on the winds. But considering you can also carry up to 10 people or 3,000 pounds, that's pretty incredible. But what really stuck out to me was its slow flight. And as you'll see in a minute, what happens when you actually stall the airplane? So we can go ahead and add that first notch of flaps. We're already below there. With all flap transitions, you get auto trim. And I always preface, it's, it'll get you close, but it won't, it's not perfect. So feel free okay. to retrim as necessary. That's cool it does that though, at least as a starting point, so you're not it makes, going nose up all of a sudden. It makes the control forces nearly, you know, you, you don't have super heavy controls going one way or the other. Cool. It's really nice. So we'll go ahead and add that second notch, 20 okay. degrees. So if you want to come back a little bit further, we can do 70 knots and we can do more traditional slow flight. Okay. The goal here, we're not quite to the stall warning horn yet. You know, you're high 60s and we're in an 8,000 pound airplane. The fact <laughs> that we're flying around at only 20 degrees of flaps in the high 60s and an 8,000 pound airplane, we don't even have the stall warning horn yet. It still feels very comfortable here. I was going to say, it just occurred to me, I was like, I mean, 70 knots, flying around 70 knots, slow flight, it's very normal to be in 182 world. And it just, I honestly just remember, like, we're in a much bigger airplane. <laughs> we're still doing 70 knots. Right. So that's pretty cool. Well, there's 70 knots and 4,500. Yeah. So it took me a while, but we got here. Do me a favor, do a left hand turn. Okay. Clear left, left. clear left. And just go to like 40, 35, 40 degree bank turn, somewhere okay. between 70 and 80. All right. Just put on 20. It's 30. Yeah, somewhere in there is fine. Okay. So the idea here, if you look out your window, you can see our turning radius is like uh -huh. next to nothing. Yeah, right. Yeah, we're, we're pivoting. Yeah. And so that's that's where that train flying kind of moniker comes in. And again, you just went, you know, you can see how stable it is, right? In a 30 degree bank turn <laughs> at 75 knots, 4,500 That's, that's pretty feet. cool. Yeah. yeah. The goal with our, with our design team has always just been about stability. Set it, forget it you know, do other things, whatever. You know, I, I consistently go into backcountry strips where I've got a real tight canyon to maybe turn inward. And the, the ability of the airplane to do just this is quite unique within this space. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Now, slow flight was pretty cool, but check out how a stall works in this airplane. I'm actually gonna keep it in the stall for just a second. I'm gonna do a left and then a right hand turn just to show you showcase the fact that that wing outboard section of the wing has never lost lift and so i still have full controllability so it's going to feel a little bit weird because we're all used to recovering right away i'll get a little bit of a break right there so there's our break so the stick is all the way back charlie you can yep. you can feel it's all the way back there's, yep. there's no further i can make a left hand turn i can make a right hand turn <laughs> i can go back to the left I have full aileron controllability. So I'll release it, come out of the stall, add a little bit of power. But you can see how that, that wing, you know, doesn't allow the airplane to stall. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. I mean, I had the, heat, the biggest grin the whole time. <laughs> With some slow flight under my belt, Mark then let me fly the landing. It was a 3,500 foot strip, which for my first time in a big airplane really had my heart going. Thankfully though, even though it's a large airplane, we flew the final approach at 80 knots, which isn't too much faster than 60 knots in my Cessna 182. So even though it's a big airplane, it didn't feel foreign. Basically just fly it like on like your 182. There'll be a little bit of a flare towards okay. the bottom. PK traffic, Kodiak 900 Sierra Zulu was on final uh, runway 02. This will be a full stop. Five PK. Yep, you kind of found that where that prop starts to govern. That's yep. normal. Okay. Uh, 80 knots. Yeah, looking good. Right here, 75 to 80 is perfect. I'll basically get down to the runway with a little bit of power. Okay. I'll kind of walk you through, but real slow on the power movements. Okay. All right, good. All right, a little 
less power. Little flare, hold it, hold it, hold it. Right there, boom, perfect. Well done. Oh, funny, I got a tailwind. A little more of a rival than a landing. Ah, that's all right. That's Pretty good for your first one, I think. Yeah, super well done. You also had a disadvantage, <laughs> you had like a seven knot tailwind. Despite this being my first time, it was actually pretty intuitive to land. It felt like a big Cessna 206 with a turbine engine or something. And there is nothing like throwing that engine into reverse. That's a loud and expensive and awesome sound. It's impossible not to smile even when thinking about it. Flying this airplane was incredible, but it's even better up close. And in the video on the screen, Mark gave us a detailed tour of the aircraft inside and out to explain why this is the best airplane they've ever made. So I'll see you there.